Hello, my name is Rich Howard, owner of Architectural Builder Supply, and this video is to bring you a closer look at the bomber number 4030-6-652. This is a 6-inch single-acting spring hinge, UL-listed, steel base, satin chrome-plated. So the 4030 is a, a single-acting spring hinge by bomber. The dash 6 is a reference to the size. The dash 652 is the finish, which means it's made of steel and that it is satin chrome plated. Satin chrome plating on steel is the second most durable finish uh, available, and it is the most durable artificial finish. The most durable finish would be a brushed finish on solid stainless. After that, satin chrome on steel would be a, would be a pretty durable finish. Um, is what that would be. Now it's not obviously a true satin chrome and that's why they call it uh, 26D because that doesn't really tell us the base material. If they were calling it 652 we would certainly know that it's satin chrome on a steel base versus 626 which is satin chrome on a brass base material. So they're saying US 2060 and this is that that means satin chrome and this is certainly quite complementary to satin chrome. Okay. Now, the 6-inch, there's a link below this video to a document called Template. And I don't really think anywhere on the hinge you're going to really measure 6-inch. Um, I suppose you could find somewhere to measure 6-inch, but 6-inch is really a reference to the fact that it has um, a capacity for a certain size of door. If you're dealing with a smaller door or a lighter door, you need a, or a thinner door, you need a smaller hinge. 6 inch is related to the size because there is a relationship between 6 and its dimensional properties as there would be if it was a 4 inch version. Um, but really on here nowhere does it, does it measure on the template at 6 inch. Here's what's important to really know. That this hinge leaf is 4.5 inch tall. Okay, 4.5 inch. That means that it's going to be appropriate for an inch and 3 quarter thick door. And that's really the important part of 6 inch. And from that template down below, you can derive all of the rest of the dimensional properties of the item. Um, notably, the leaf thickness at 134 thousandths. If I put a caliper on there, it's going to be really close to that, if not exactly that. Probably very close. Um, and you're dealing with a four and a half inch tall hinge. That's 134 thousandths thick. That's a standard weight hinge. That does really relate or, or equate to inch and three quarter thick doors. So the sizing of bomber hinges isn't directly logically linked to here's the size of the hinge. It's more linked to here's the capacity or the capability of the hinge or the compatibility of the hinge on a particular door size and door thickness. So a six inch tells me that you've got an inch and three quarter thick door and it's probably a fire rated door. It certainly could be. Um, in New York City, Chicago too, but New York City, you can't go far as a tourist and not see a single acting bomber spring hinge that is de that would certainly be decades old. They're everywhere in New York. And New York, obviously, why? Well, it's an incredibly old city in comparison to other cities in the United States. And it's, it's an incredibly dense urban area. So you're going to have, obviously, a lot of construction, a lot of development that has occurred over the decades. And in fact, you know, um, over the last couple hundred years, right? Uh, more than that, certainly. So there is a description down below, extended description information. So first of all, a 40, a 4030 means single acting spring hinge. If you get into other bomber spring hinges, that part number is going to change, the 4030. The 4030 tells us that it is a full mortise hinge, that the leaves are meant to be mortised flush to the edge of the door and the frame, especially when you notice from the template how exactly they're drawn. They, they're shown mortised so that you achieve the clearance between the two leaves of your .062, a sixteenth of an inch. Um, I've hopped over to the manufacturer's page in the site so I can pull up the catalog so that I can do a quick review of the 4030 and its sister products when it comes to spring hinges. So you're going to have 
in the manufacturer's catalog, if you did a control F or a find function, you'll find 4030, and that is going to be a steel based hinge that is going to be um, a four and a half inch template hole pattern. In fact, you do not get a 4030 apparently in any other size. Okay. Um, however, the logic still applies that when you change the number, you change the size of the hinge. A 4030 is only made in a six inch. Okay. A 4040 is the same hinge in terms of the base material, but it's got a different leaf construction. Um, it is a non template pattern leaf that's going to go much taller than the four and a half inch hinge leaf. <clears throat> this is when you when you have a door and frame that's prepped for a template location. The location of those screw holes are what we would call template location. So if you refer to the location of screw holes and then you apply the word template to it, it tells us the locations of the screw holes and, and the size of all that. You can do this hinge and it's 4040 as a ball tip as well. You would say that would be a CL size hinge. The 4040 is available as a seven inch tall hinge, uh, which will simply increase your capability in terms of door weight um, or door size and then therefore door weight. So the catalog's handy for that, for that reason. Now back to the extended description. Uh, adjustable spring tension, we're gonna go over that. Pivot points do not align with, and I'm reading from the extended description, pivot points do not align with standard full mortise hinges. Um, they don't, which means you can't mix and match. You have to have all of these on the door. You can't use a standard ball bearing hinge because the vertical axis of pivoting and its location in relationship to the door would not be compatible. Uh, UL listed for fire door applications. That is indeed the, the bottom line. Interesting fun fact, if you're putting and this is under tension. If you're putting spring hinges onto a door as required by life safety, uh, fire safety code, NFPA 80, um, a spring hinge must actually be physically not only listed, but labeled when it's a spring hinge. A uh, spring hinge must bear visual evidence that it is compliant with fire rated requirements of a door. Um, that must be the cost for getting into the party, I guess. Um, regular ball bearing hinges don't have to be physically labeled. They are just listed. Listed means that they've been tested and then somewhere on file at the testing laboratory, they can pull a sheet of paper out of their filing cabinet and say, yep, we tested that hinge. Boom, boom, boom. This date passed, whatever. But spring hinges have to physically bear a label of that listing. Um, and, and that's why you'll always see that on a UL listed spring hinge. Be mindful if you're doing a job where there's spring hinges and they're not visually identifiable as such, you don't have a fire rated door. Um, factory uh, BHMA grade one million cycles. This has been cycled a million times and if I know Bomber that's probably kept working after five million cycles. Actually I was speaking to the engineer at Bomber once and they were testing a spring hinge, not a 4030 but like a LB 4390 um, it the test counter got to four and a half million and it was still going <laughs> so you know it was that sort of application non-handed this um, backup factory set spring tension we're going to go over that in a moment four and a half inch template hole pattern we talked about that the location of those holes are an industry standard titled template non-handed yeah you can install this this ships from the factory as a left hand um, meaning it's the hinge is really asymmetrical. It has this large feature to the back side of it there that it doesn't hear. So what they're showing is put this hinge, I guess, um, into the jam, and this portion will be towards the frame. This portion would be the the door portion, and you'll see that in the installation instructions. Um, and we'll go over that. So the point of the matter is it's not handed. If this is a left hand, okay, well now it's a right hand. And we're gonna talk about how that sets up differently. It is again made of steel for a maximum, for a door thickness of inch and three quarter. Maximum door weight with two hinges, 125 pounds. When you go to three, you can get up to 155 pound door. 
Two hinges would be three foot, three hinges would be four foot. Uh, we'll include screws. They are giving us all machine and half wood. All machine and half wood. That makes sense. Um, if you're doing a fire rated door, you're not going to have a wood frame. Um, you could, but you're really not going to have a wood frame. Uh, so you'll have at least four machine screws, and you'll be doing maybe a wood door, uh, possi very possibly a wood door. Uh, so they will give you four screws. If you have need for all wood screws or all metal screws, indicate that in the comment field. If you've got half wood, half metal, I don't. there won't be a reason to indicate that. But we don't want you to be short on four wood screws when you just are doing wood screws or wood door, wood frame. Um, there is a requirement of at least two spring hinges on a door uh, according to NFPA 80. They are UL listed. Maximum door size is important. If you're dealing with NFPA 80 and the requirements thereof, 3070 is the maximum door size. Always verify local code requirements. Absolutely. Um, Non-labeled doors can get up to that 4 foot wide or that 90 inch tall. And there you go. Let's take a look at the installation instructions since we've talked about the template already. There are a couple of versions of the installation instructions. An older set and then a, a newer set. Now, when the hinge comes, it's going to look like this. Don't do anything first, except read the instructions, uh, because this is odd in the sense that, hey, why is it already like this? You know, why am I already under tension? Don't don't take anything apart. If you're doing a left hand, great. According to the installation and instructions, you're doing a right hand, flip it over. That will be important. The way that the hinge comes right out of the box is how you're going to install it to the door and frame. Literally hang the door with the hinge like this. This will give you enough room to get your screwdriver in to attach everything to both leaves. That's the plan. Don't do it any other way. There's a reason for that. Um, the hinge collar can, the hinge can be used left or right without changing the appearance and what they're meaning is this asymmetrical look. Okay. The fixed, okay, so turn it upside down if, if your application calls for it. Do not remove the tension collar, the tension pin from the fixed collar. The fixed collar is identified by the tension pin placed in the collar to hold the hinge open while installing the hinge to the door and frame. That's a bit more odd. This tension pin down here is the indeed the pin holding the leaves open. That therefore is the fixed collar. You could prove that if by putting the tension rod into the collar, it doesn't move. Whereas this one, does move okay the one that's got the pin in the crotch of the hinge that's the fixed collar don't try to close the door at all after you get it hung with that tension pin in the fixed collar in place you're just going to damage the hinge door is hung open it to 90 degree now take your fixed collar tension pin out Then the door will close under preset tension because this tension pin up here, if you're, it's a left-hand door, it'll be on the top. If it's a right-hand door, it'll be at the bottom. That's got tension already set on it. So what you do at that point is you call it a day. But before you do that, test the door. Does the door open and fully close and latch? If it's a fire-rated door, you have there's, there, there are two cardinal rules. There's really three. Two cardinal rules. Must be self-closing. Must be self-latching. A fire-rated door also needs to be free-swinging. Um, but make sure it closes and latches. That's the key. If you need to adjust for to accomplish and achieve those requirements, you will then adjust the spring tension on this tension collar. You will insert your tension rod, and if the collar is pointed towards the top of the door, you turn it clockwise. And as I do so, I reveal a new hole. So what I can do is I can take that pin out and pop it into the new hole, and it'll hit, it'll hold there. Um, with this hinge, I don't see it listed there, but if you're going to 90 degree, I think up to four holes would be permissible of tension. And if you're going past that, really three holes. Um, and then you call it a day after you've got your tension set. This is a massive hinge. It's going to make the door move and boogie down closed. Um, 
your also your other requirement uh, if you're dealing with NFP 101 or or the actually I should say the ADA code is that you get a minimum of two seconds of close time. Uh, I think from 85 degree down to within so many inches of close. I forget. It's six inches, ten inches, but it's in the ADA code. So be mindful that you still have to close and latch the door, but you still have to at least do it in not less than two seconds from those two points. Um, the important thing with code is not, I don't think, memorizing it. It's knowing where to find it. I would know exactly where to find it. I just, you know, um, it's in the code book is where to find it. Doors up to 60 inch, two hinges are required. Uh, after that, after 30 inches, every 30 inches after that, add an additional hinge. But you're limited by your by your uh, your rated and non-rated sizes. The new installation instructions dated 2016, at least at this time, are included. And I'm looking at the 1997 version. I didn't see anything different except that they're a little cleaner, I suppose. Yeah, there's, yeah they've been drawn a little bit cleaner, but really not worth mentioning. So the bottom line is when the hinge comes just hang the door. Then once you got the door hung you can open it and then pull that pin out. Don't throw the pin out. You might need that someday because those pins are hard to come by um, and they are required to set tension on the spring. You could remove those pins or your painter could remove the pins in five years and lose them. Now you're spending twenty dollars in shipping charges to get some pins sent to you. So if you follow my meaning try to save those that unused tension pin. Um, this hinge is obviously available in all of the colors that they can do uh, on steel. Your brasses, your bronze, your chromes, your oil rubbed. Because it's made of steel, it's not going to be a true architectural finish by any stretch, but it will certainly be complementary. Um, anything will be plated over steel, like your polished brass. Oil rubbed is a reasonable oil rubbed. Um, the process differs because the, the, the oil rubbed process is directly related to the base material and other requirements, but really the base material too. Um, so it won't be a, a gorgeous oil rubbed bronze because the base material is steel. It's not bronze. Uh, and so, so be mindful of that. But they'll do it in all the finishes. The ball tips are very common. Um, and again, New York City. Get into a hotel that was built 100 years ago. It's going to be full of bomber hinges. Um, and then finally, back to the manufacturer's page within the website where you can review not only all of the bomber products that we sell, but a link to that manufacturer's catalog, as well as a link to the uh, manufacturer's website. Other documents are there as well. Um, their postal specialties, which I think they've thoroughly gotten rid of, or almost all of that product line they've gotten rid of and gotten out of. The postal specialty, postal specialties business. Um, actually, if you're familiar with Bomber, you probably are because of their double acting spring hinges. But as you take a tour through the rest of their product catalog, you'll see they make a lot more than spring hinges. Notable will be their lavatory hardware. If you're ever doing high-end hotels or a library, they've got an exquisite line of solid brass, beautiful lavatory hardware. The last thing to point out to you is the Bomber logo and right above it, Made in USA. The fact that Bomber is quite proud of, as am I, to represent them. If you have any questions on the Bomber, this is their part number 4030-6-652 or any other Bomber product, please feel free to reach out to us. And thank you.